Vivaldi. Oh, Nadie, please. Hey! Well made. I'm the Vivaldi! Where do you think you're going? I'm a Vivaldi! Hey, stop! I'm a Vivaldi! She is not. Excuse me, she really isn't. She's, she's not a Vivaldi. But I, I know the Vivaldi. Honestly, I swear, she's she's not. I'm sorry, but you're not a Vivaldi. Oh, yes, I am. Uh, uh, then which Vivaldi are you? I am Margaret Vivaldi. Uh, uh, no, I have studied the entire family tree. There is no Margaret Vivaldi. Now, I think you should pay for that or take that back. Oh, yeah. Don't you touch me. Beverly Louise is touching me. Hey. What are you doing? Hey. Uh, no. Oh, you did a kill. No, I'm a Vivaldi employee. Honestly, I just need to pop She's in. with the council. She's been given priority. Uh, now then, uh, teas, 50 pence. Excuse me. Coffee, 65. Excuse me. Thank you. Excuse me. Pass him down the line. I'm singing live tonight. Bring the flyer and you get him free. Well, you get him free anyway, because it's a pub. Oh, All boys welcome. Boys in their pants. Big boys in their pants. Big boys with no pants. <laughs> Pass him back. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. There's the woman. Now then, Iris, Mrs. Earn wants to know why the bin men can't put her wheelie bin back outside her house. They shove it five doors down and she has to retrieve it in all weathers. What street is that? Scanty Heights. We look into it. There we are. Direct action. Max Vivaldi transforming local government. Next. Cliff, take notes. I'm consulting with Iris. Next. What's top of the agenda? Complaints. Peter, being jumped out in the fridge. Complaints about what? Your entire family charging about Swansea pillaging. The shops are losing money. The shops are losing a couple of quid in return for which I don't charge them any ground rent. Well, where does it stop? Right. Is your son going to start demanding his way with the local girls? Absolutely not. Local boys may be, and good luck to him. Max, I'm only saying this to help. The city likes you at the moment. Next. We're a boom town, we're laughing. But it's a knife edge. If you lose that goodwill, it could turn lethal. Your family has got to calm down. Fair dues, point taken. I'll tell them I'll issue an edict. Now, have you seen? Come and see. The Valley Vision expand. It's all being cabled up. Cameras in every room. My government will be fair and will be seen to be fair. This house can broadcast live on Channel 6 24 hours a day. Internet as well. How's it going? It's all right. Iris Price, my learned colleague. This is my boy, Leo. It's your birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday. Thanks. And you're in charge of all this? No, I'm just helping. He's got school. This part of the empire belongs to my second in command. My dad in Wherever he is. They attacked me, and everyone stood back and let them. And do you know why? Because they said they were Vivaldi's. So what you're saying is, you got into a fight with a girl and broke your arm? It was three girls, and they were women. And it isn't broken. I've got a badly sprained wrist. Do me a favour and don't say badly sprained wrist when there are men in the room. It's not my fault. It's your bloody family. Hold on. Family. Keep going. Oh, God, listen. I'm starting sounding Welsh. Your bloody family. But it's your lot, wandering around town like, well, like they own the place, which they do, but... I know. It's terrible. I'm a Vivaldi. It's got to stop. I completely agree. So, are you going to need a lift? No, I've got a cab on its way now. They've discharged you already. That's a bit quick for casualty. Well, I said I was a Vivaldi. <laughs> so why are you phoning me, then? I need your services. I mean, professionally, I'm still stuck in that B&B. Gonna have to get myself a flat. So you're definitely staying? Well, I haven't resigned yet. I'm still officially on holiday. But I'll do it on Monday. Looks like you're stuck with me. Listen, I've got this whole new form of madness descending, but... Do you want to go for dinner tonight? What, just you and me? No, let's invite the West Glamorgan Jazz Band. Yes, you and me. What about Gethin? He's away. He's got this residential training course in Abergavenny. Won't be back till tomorrow. Yes or no, quickly? Yes. Golden Bowl, Chinese on Cliff Street. Eight o'clock. See you there. Well, look at you then. 
Freeman, Hardy and Willis. Now, the situation is urgent. Your father's got those cameras in every single room. I'm not having it. We're moving out pronto. Show us your houses, the biggest and the best. My daughter's going up in the world. And by God, I'm clinging on behind. Um, hold on a minute. Um, I, I tell you what, yeah, sorry, I've just got to pop back inside. I forgot to get something. If you could just wait five minutes, thanks. <laughs> this place. She has three arteries going into her kidneys. What sort of neighbours? Lawyers and dentists. She didn't speak to her daughter for 15 years. Then they both died in the same week. So, what do you think? It's not exactly a mansion, but I don't know. It's got something about it. The house on the end was nice. Yeah, but there's people living there. We own the land. I know, but you can't evict them. Can't we? Now, don't be daft. And this place is lovely. Just think about it. No, it's possible, I'm just saying. We could extend, yeah, build a conservatory. Like the lawn, that's nice. We could have drinks on the lawn when Stella comes round. You're not inviting Stella. As a matter of fact, she's invited me tonight. Bloody hell, she'll have you join the daughter of the Gower next. Since you mention it, that's what tonight's all about. Oh, for God's sake, that bunch of snobs. If by snobs you mean a cut above, then I see nothing wrong with that. And if I do buy this house, then there's going to be no smoking, Auntie Bron, so we can start right now. No smoking? For why? Because it stinks. There's a great big garden, both of you. Go on. No smoking. The daughters of the Gower. I'm telling you, Myrtle, you're losing her. She was always the little princess. That's your fault, Molly Codlin. But this, <laughs> bloody airs and graces. She'll come back. I'm not so sure. Brahman, we're playing a long game here. Val knows nothing about where she's heading, and that suits me just fine. She needs her mother in the end. Mm. Just you watch. I keep telling your father. We could have more than one official residence. You and Gethin could find a house. Nice little start to married life. I don't know. We haven't talked about that stuff yet. You want to pin him down? I think I'm the one avoiding it. I've been a bit naughty. What does that mean? There's this... someone else. And he's nice. He's really nice. In what way? It just is. I've never been unfaithful before. Sort of exciting. Like everything's a bit more important. My God, Maria, you can be foolish. How many Gethins are you ever going to get? And here you are chucking him away for a silly little bit of excitement. I'm not chucking anything. You're 26 years old. It's taken you long enough to get engaged as it is. You have to go and spoil everything. Who is he then, this bloke? Who is he? He's no one. Are you seeing him again? No. Then what you go and tell me for? You can play all the games you like. Just don't expect me to approve. Ma'am, we're going. Oi! My dad sees you, he's gonna kill you. Oh, big man. I'm gonna kill you myself. Do us a favor and shut up. Police dropping all charge against you, all right? How'd you know? Because they're charging me, dimwit. Happy now? I need a character reference. I need someone to stand up in court and defend me. And you're a Vivaldi, your name counts for something. Like I'm helping you. Give me a reference, and I'll introduce you to Yanto. Who's Yanto? 
He lives three doors down from me. So? He's 17, he left school last year, he's gone back to tech now, he's doing economics. So? So you should meet him. What for? He's just finished with his boyfriend. So? How old are you now? 16. I'm 16 tomorrow. What's 16 gonna be? Just fiddling on the internet? Or having to go the real thing? You got my number. and I don't want starters. I'm just having a main course. Actually, I can order. I'm ready. I'll have the lemon chicken. What do you want? What do you like? I haven't looked. It's a Chinese. What's there to look at? Do you like sweet and sour? Yeah. Sweet and sour pork and fried rice. Quick as you can, thanks. You might as well bring us the bill while you're at it. Actually, if you take my card, you can charge it to that. Saves right. any faffing about. And you can put on 10% for service. Thank you. Thanks. Well, that was fun. I feel quite full. I suppose that's what they call speed dating. It's not a date. We've done far more than date. Not anymore. I take it Gethin's a problem. <sighs> Thank you. That was lovely. Said, I'm not sitting here all day watching the bloody telly tubby, man. There you are. I was about to give up. Yanto, this is Leo Vivaldi. Leo, this is Yanto. Yanto Jones. Hi. Yeah. Well, that's my cue to bugger off. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Then again, I wouldn't do anything you two do anyway. My dad owns the town. Yeah? You look nice, Val. And? I'm not sad. There's normally a sharp little punchline. But now my husband owns the town, I suppose I've become acceptable. Yes. That's exactly it. The daughters of the Gower await. Now, don't be nervous. I'm not. Well, I am a little bit. You want a fuss now? The daughterhood was formed in 1919 on the same day as the Treaty of Versailles. And we've been driving Swansea society ever since. And Swansea commerce, too. These are the wives, Val. The power behind the throne. And isn't that a perfect description of you? Chin up and smile. Your husband owns the town. Valerie, this is Gwenda Mulrose. 
member challenge Annika has been provided the plywood. And this is Iris Price. Oh, yes, of course. I've been round your house. Iris, get Val a drink. Chop, chop, gin tea, thank you. Sweet woman, spinster, bless. And this is Yvonne Ogmore Pritchard. The infamous Valerie. Let me look at you, girl. Beautiful. That elfin little face doesn't show up on photos, does it? And you stand a fabulous frock. What do you think? I shirked and shirked and could not do the thing. It was a living cauchemar. Has she seen you? Oh, I was coming to that. And here we have an extra guest. In fact, you could call him a permanent fixture. He's very popular with the ladies. His name is Vast. I have him on morning, noon, and night. It's Vivaldi Vision. We're hooked. I'm sending tapes up north. The daughters of Rill adore him. Weiss been out hunting. And if you missed the earlier bulletin, they got the charges against my son. I now have a son who's had charges dropped. Very modern. Anyway, it's a quiet night in the Valley Villas. I've been abandoned. Cheers, then, Swansea. Cheers. What do you mean you're going round to Stella's? You can't stand bloody Stella. Don't tell me you're becoming a dog. It's not dog, it's D O T G. It's Daughters of the Gower. Is the man you making up? It's always off. Well, then turn it off. I'm sick of being spied on. Thank you, viewers. Just to announce that Candy Zita Vivaldi, that is myself, shall be performing tonight at the Ship and Anchor down the Mumbles. Thank you. I shall be performing hits of the past, or rather my hits of the past, and all booking should now go through my new manager. That's Big Claire. Say hello, Big Claire. Hello, Wembley! So boogie on down. Buy me a drink and I'll give you a kiss. Candy, eh? It's Candy Zita. Starts at 8.30. Come and get me, boys. So sure I felt secure Until the truth is eaten I did. Never mind all the time and energy I devoted. Never mind me falling completely in love with you like an idiot. No, never mind that. You go and kiss the boys. Hold on. Come back here and say that again. My turn. So, where'd you live? What do you like doing? What do you like hunting? What's your favourite program? Do you like Angel? Do you like Enterprise? Where did you go to school? What's it like in tech? How'd you get there? Have you got a car? Come on! this. Not kids. Don't do all that following stuff. No, but we've established the real problem is Gethin. So what would you do if there was no Gethin? But there is. But what if there wasn't? I'm engaged to him. And in this part of the world, that means something. Now I'm asking you, just leave it. 
Okay. Maybe I'll go here. Because my problem isn't with you. It's with him. And what does that mean? Maybe I should go and see Gethin. Danny, I swear, if you want to do something for me, then... Go back to London. Forget about all this. Just go home. Oh, give me ten minutes out of these blisters on me. If you will, go mm -hmm. hike, eh? Hey, now, don't deny my pleasures. Ivan has discovered a sudden passion for the Brecon Beacons. A sudden passion was 39 and 6 foot 2 is size 12 feet. <laughs> if you get my drift, Val. A woman needs a hobby, and a woman needs a shark. Yes, she does. She's outrageous. Especially if her husband's too busy working in Ebu Vale. Now, Val, don't frown. Don't shame me. I'm not. She's not Lily White, this one. Excuse me, I'm a widow. Your husband was fully compassmentous when you took Spanish lessons. And how old was Chico? Twenty-two. Oh, now look at Val's face. She's married to my brother. For shame, I've mortified her. Come on now, Val. Your turn. You must have had the odd moment. No, not really, no. Valerie. Who is the daughters now? A sacred trust. Truth will out and not a word to the men, folk. That's our solemn pledge. Well, I suppose there was one man. And who was he? Oh, all right then. His name was Sam. He's a trader in Mambo's. He goes door to door. Like a salesman? Yes, that's right. He's the egg man. Mrs. Vivaldi, you cheval noir. <laughs> Good on you. I don't stop there, one chapter and verse. Yvonne, get the tequila. We're having a session. You can't just say we ended up in bed. But we did. Details, step by step. Well, we were in the kitchen and he sort of brushed against me. What's he like though? Big, strong bugger, is he? Horny handed son of toil. Has he got stubble? Actually, yes. He has. Oh, exfoliate me. <laughs> Big, strong chin. He's got his lantern jaw all covered in stubble. What about his eyes? Blue. Piercing blue. Like Paul Newman. Oh. And he leans in. Where was Max? Off somewhere, I don't know. Last thing I was thinking about was Max. Spoken like a trooper. <laughs> then Sam puts his hand on mine. Great big rough colour stand. And I'm holding my breath. He's holding his breath. We're both staring. This close. And then he tilts his head and opens his mouth and kisses me like he's starving. I have to say, I'm not remotely lesbo. I never thought you were. I think I'm deformed. I read the magazines and everyone's 10% kinky these days, but I'm lacking. I'm abnormal. What about Mr Digby? It's another life. Well, it's no sort of life, really. Just me and him and arguments about the central eating. I left him last year. I said all those things about searching for something and finding myself. But I didn't. I just sat there. All day, I just sat. And then one day, I switched on the news and this beautiful girl took off her clothes. And was wild and pink, free. And everything made sense. You mean me? Yeah. I made you lesbo? It doesn't quite work like that. 
I suppose it was always there. You were just a trigger. What, like trigger from Money Fools and Horses? No, like the trigger on a gun. I was like the trigger on a gun? Yeah. I shot you? No! I'm lost now. Never mind. Trigger makes me laugh. <laughs> it's very funny. So, all of this with you now, is it good or bad? Good. Well, there we are then. What are you fussing about? Big Claire's muscled in a bit, doesn't she? She tries her best. But you shouldn't do pubs. You're better than pubs. You've been at number 127 in the charts. I could get you to number 126. <laughs> right then. Big Claire's sacked. You're in charge from now on. Is that all right? If it's all right with you. <laughs> Oh, my God. I kissed a lesbo. I didn't talk too much, did I? Oh, that's what the daughters are for. We can talk and talk, and no bloody husband saying shush. <laughs> and on the subject of husbands, there is a tiny bit of business. I thought there might be. My company wants to build that arcade on Waters Road, and Max is refusing permission. I'll see what I can do. Ask my girl. I need to judge his mood. I'll give you a call tomorrow. What? Pop in. Leo's birthday. There we are. We can conspire. Thank you for tonight. Actually, business aside, that was fun. Yes, it was. Thank right then. Coffee at eight times. Shut up. I wanted to get you a new computer since we're supposed to be rich, but your dad spent all the money on Vivaldi Vision, so put <laughs> him in. It's a public service. There you go. I regret that business is suspended for the duration of the request, a little Lord Leo. Plus, it's a Saturday, so bugger off home. Swansea can run itself for a day. Sixteen years ago. Remember that male nurse? Who are you? Who are you? I wonder if he's still there. Who are you? More like a hundred years ago. I was Stella regale me. It was fun. Truth be told, I loved it. That's done you good, you're smiling. Talk about me. Is the camera on? No, switch to external. She wants planning permission. I think I'm supposed to seduce you. Well, go on then. I might later. You might indeed. And what's the harm? If she does want another arcade, she's done well with that business. If it stops all this tension, why not? Well, maybe then. Are you eating jam out of the jar? I'm supposed to eat more fruit. So we'll do the cinema this afternoon. You've got jam on your lip. Is that all right? He wants to see the Rugrats movie. Oh, shut up. And the Wild Thornberries. Now what you're talking. They've got the Rugrats and the Wild Thornberries in the same movie now. Can you imagine? If I was five, that would make my head burst. There must be five-year-olds all over the country whose heads are bursting. Hiya, only me. I've left a message on your mobile as well. But if you get home from Abergavenny in time, don't come round to mine, because I'm going to Mum and Dad's. It's Leo's birthday. 
Or, and Leo says the police have dropped the charges against him so you can unfreeze his bank account. Bollocks! He's a jammy little kid. That gives him £30,000 at 16. Anyway, if I don't see you down the members, I'll come around your house later. And I missed you last night. Bye. So, you're not an Abergavenny. Pardon? So, you're not an Abergavenny. I'm sorry, what? So, you're not in... Oh, so you're not in Abergavenny. Right, yeah. No, I'm not, no. What's wrong with your arm? I, I sprained my wrist. How did you do that? It was three, um, women, big women. Sorry, can we stick to the point? It's about Maria. Come on in. Don't ever phone my house again. I only came round because your sound is suicidal, not that I care. But I do own this town. And every citizen is my responsibility. And yes, that's big of me. But hurry up. I thought I was in love. Oh, God. I thought I was in love. And I thought I'd lost. I was spurned. And that's all right. There's something noble in that. Something... noble. I had my TV, with our division. I could see her. The creeps. Till this morning. I went out early, on the air ground. I went to Kittle, drove on the farm, said hello. Came back home. To that. Seven messages. Do you see? They say seven. I never get seven messages. My dad's not been too good. A little panic standing here. Seven messages for me. Do you want to hear that? Hello there. My name's Yvonne Ogmo Pritchard. I was given your name last night by Valerie Vivaldi and she highly recommended your home delivery, if you see what I mean. I'd love you to take charge of my eggs. Phone me back. I'm on 01632-960004. Hi, my name's Gwenda, and Mrs. Vivaldi has given you the most exciting reference. Sam, I was with Valerie Vivaldi last night, now then, Sam, I was given your name by my sister-in-law. I'm looking for a man who does. And I've heard that you does very nicely. She thrilled me with tales of your home delivery. I'd love to try you for myself. My name's Iris Price. My name is Mrs. Jacob My name is Stella Craven. I'd like some eggs. And that's your wife. First of all, she betrays you, and it's my turn. She's laughing at us, Max. Telling them all and laughing. We loved that woman. She's turned us into gossip. I don't want to fight. I'm not that sort of man. Plus the sling. But it's better to come straight out with it. I saw you yesterday. I was at the hospital, hence the sling. And I saw you with that woman and that baby, and it was definitely you. That was my sister. She's had a baby. I want to see her. Bollocks, no, I haven't got a sister. Is that your baby? I've got to put this. Yes. I think my basic approach from now on has to be yes. Bollocks. Did you have an affair, or...? One night stand. Then there she is, on the doorstep. Literally, on the doorstep, like the little bloody match girl, asking for money, and I can't pay, because I lost on those investments. I haven't got a thing. What investments? It doesn't matter. I lost them, so I couldn't pay her off. How much did you lose? 40,000. Well, I didn't so much lose it as gamble it. There's a difference. Because gambling's honourable. It's like the sport of gentlemen, a mass of fact. Hold on, so... You're a gambler. 
and a bloody good one, too. I only came to ask about the baby. Well, there we are. I'm a complex man. Not many appreciate that. So, you're in debt? Up to there. I'm not sure you should be telling me about this. Well, think what it's been like for me! Start with a baby and everything unravels. But have you seen me complaining? No. I have to say, you've been very honest. I'm that sort of man. Apart from the bits where you lied. The thing is... Right. Yes. OK. If we're being honest... I didn't exactly come here out of the goodness of my heart. I have a vested interest, and I apologise for that. Not for the interest, per se, but for intruding upon another man's territory. Not that women are man's territory, I don't mean that. And certainly not Maria. Although, it could be argued that even now we maintain a fundamentally Neolithic approach to mating rituals. <laughs> from the generation that thinks DVD stands for Dick Van Dyke. But they said in the shop that you'd probably like it. Where were you on his 15th birthday, Stella? Mum, don't start. I'll tell you where we were. We were here. That's where we were. Remember when we were little and we got a present if it wasn't our birthday? I think we should bring that back. Is that Danny Block around? I haven't seen him. What for? Nothing. He's just usually hanging about, that's all. Makes a pleasant change. Is it too early for a drink? Never. No. Oh, I hate to be the spectre of the feast, but have you seen Rivaldi Vision? Original. Sean Lloyd painted that. Oh, you can't do this! Valerie? You wanted a nice big house? Well, here it is. I have this one. What are you doing, Max? Claiming my property. But you can't. You simply can't do this. This is my house. On my land. But I live here. Not anymore. I've taken what's mine. Your personal property will be driven to the edge of Swansea and dumped. I'm calling the police. I'm operating within the law. Trespassers will be prosecuted. Oh, for God's sake. I'm sorry. Can you take that camera away? Stay where you are, Vivi. But what the hell am I supposed to have done? Just what you've always done. Stella sat there with a gin and tonic, laughing at the rest of us. You and your daughters of the bloody gower. Well, they are disbanded as of now, and you are banished. Henceforth, I exile you from this city. What do you think this is, ancient Rome? You can't exile me. I just did. We can put the city over there. Or we can have brand new, whatever you want. Yes, let's have brand new. With our spanking new white sofas, how would that be? Max, just tell me, what is it? What have I done? Oh, well. Maybe we should just go home. What do you think? Leo's waiting. Birthday tea. I never thought I'd feel sorry for the Eggman, but you savaged us both. You made us into a joke. You and the ladies of Swansea. I haven't got enough people laughing at me. Oh, but there's a great new joke doing the rounds. Have you heard? Have you heard the one about Max's wife? She means sleeping with Eggman. Turn that off! She's having an affair and it's funny. 
Max, just shut up, will you? They're watching at home. Just don't. It's true, isn't it? The Valley Vision never lies. Bronwyn, we have work to do. I'm a Vivaldi! Your mum's here, sweetheart. We can find a way out of this. Mum, you can't fix this by making a pot of soup. It's not like I've grazed my knee. I've been shamed. Even the kids saw it. Hello, Max. Absolute power corrupts, absolutely. Did you get your eggs? Ah. Oh. I thought you were on my side. Max, the town is terrified. You're making this a dictatorship. No. You're doing what every politician does, assuming the people are thick. What I just did was right and fair, and people understand that. They want it. You think this is what people want? Absolutely. They want leadership? Yes. They need you. Yes. Then ask them. The rest of the country's got local elections next week. Not for us, of course, because we've got you. But the systems are still in place. We could have a vote, if you agree. A vote on what? On you. Max in or Max out. Because answer me this. What do you love? Swansea. What are you proud of? Swansea. What do you respect? Swansea. So give Swansea a voice. Give it democracy. And if you lose, you renounce your claim on Swansea. And if I win? You'll be sanctioned by the people. This town will be your empire forevermore. You'll be unstoppable. Come on, Maxi boy. What do you think? Do you fancy a fight? Iris. Let the people decide. Listen to your mother now, honey. You do what's always been done. This family has a tradition for dealing with wayward men. Which is what? I'm sorry, my love. But you've got to put him down. Put him down? Like a dog. The only way to survive your husband is to kill him. It's a merciful release. Max Favaldi has gone. 